Intermediate Algebra section 3.4 deals with systems of equations in three variables. Some problems naturally call for a translation to three or more equations. So that's what we're going to deal with in this section is how to solve systems of three linear equations. The graph of a linear equation in three variables is a plane. Because a three-dimensional coordinate system is required, solving the systems in three variables graphically is difficult. So fortunately, the elimination method works well for any system of three equations and three unknowns. It's actually called the Gaussian elimination method, where rows end up in a row echelon form, or sometimes called a triangular shape. It's also sometimes called a funnel form, and I'll show you what that means. When we're dealing with a linear equation in three variables, it is an equation equivalent to one in the form of ax plus by plus cz equals d, where those coefficients a, b, c, and d are all real numbers. And when we're dealing with three unknowns, we have to have three equations to solve the system, and the result can be a point common to these three planes. And think of a plane as a sheet of paper or the ceiling of the room that extends infinitely in all of those directions. That's what this equation is representing. And we're looking at three planes that intersect. If you look at the front of the room, the side wall of the room, and the ceiling, those three planes intersect in the corner of the room. That common point of intersection is the triple, the ordered triple, x, y, z. So let's take a look at this example here. I'm going to number the rows to help us keep track of what's happening. As I mentioned, I want to get this in that triangular form where the first equation has all three variables, the next equation only has two variables, and the third equation, and these can be in any order, but the third equation only has one variable so that we can solve for that, plug it in, and work our way back up through the funnel. So my goal is to eliminate this leading term in the second equation. To do that, one option would be to multiply this e first equation, every term, by a negative 1. The result then will change every one of those signs to the opposite of what we have. I'm then going to just simply add it to the second equation. And this result will replace or be called our new equation number 2. So when we add, the x's are gone. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2y. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1z. And the 7's cancel one another out. This is now the new equation for 2. My first equation is going to stay the same. x plus y plus z equals 7. My new name for equation 2 or form of it is negative 2y plus z equals 0. And my uh, next step is the same procedure as far as I want to work with equation 1 and equation 3 to eliminate the x in equation number 3. So I plan to, if this was only a negative 5x when added to equation number 3 would eliminate the x, so I plan to multiply equation number 1 every term by negative 5. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x times the y is negative 5y, times the z is negative 5z, and negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. I'm going to add it to equation number 3. And 
other than just copying it down, nothing is going to alter that. The x's are gone. A negative 5 plus 1 leaves a negative 4. A negative 5 plus 1 leaves a negative 4, y and z respectively. And we'll have a negative with a difference of 24. I should make mention that any time you get a result and you can reduce that, go ahead and do so. And since there's a common 4 to each one of the terms and all three of them are negative, I propose an alteration to my new equation number 3. I'm going to divide every term by negative 4 so it cleans up even better looking for our third equation. The negatives will cancel out, leaving y. The negatives will cancel out, leaving z. The negatives will cancel out, and 24 divided by 4 leaves us with 6. So here's our new lean trim equation number 3. And we're almost in that desired triangular form. What I now have is I'm going to leave equation number one alone. I used it to transform the second and the third equation. Now what I have is I'm down to two equations and two unknowns, and it's your choice how you want to eliminate one of these variables. Probably the easiest would be to multiply the third equation by two so that when added together, the y's will cancel out. We could also choose to multiply one or the other equations by a negative one so that the z's cancel out. Your choice, as I said, there's nothing sacred about the steps. It's maintaining equality. You want to be very neat and organized. Watch your arithmetic because um, that will catch you more times than anything else. So the goal right now is I'm only working with these two equations and I think I'll leave equation number 2 as is, negative 2y plus z equals 0. The second equation, let's multiply it by 2. So I'm taking, I said the second equation, but the second equation here, which is actually our third equation overall, multiply everything by 2. So we end up with a 2y, a 2z, and 2 times 6 is 12. Now when we add these together, the y's are gone. We have 1z plus 2z is 3z. 0 plus 12 is 12. We're down to one equation and one unknown, which we can solve. Here's where we now have that triangular form, and we'll work our way back up through to solve for the variables. So dividing both sides by 3, we get z is equal to 4. These three planes intersect, and our ordered pair, x, y, or our ordered triple is x, y, z, and we have just found what our z coordinate is. Once we know what z is, pick one of the two equations that has z and just one variable in it. I like the looks of three, it's smaller numbers. So z is equal to a 4. Let me slide this up. Plugging it into equation number 3, we have y plus z, which we found to be 4, is equal to 6 from equation number 3, our altered one. Subtracting a 4 from each side, we end up with y is equal to a 2. So we can fill that in for our point of intersection of these planes. And once we know two equation or two variables, we then can plug it into any one of the three original equations. I like the looks of that first equation has the least uh, smallest numbers anyway. So to solve for x, I'm going to use equation number one, x plus y, which we found to be two, plus z, which we found to be four, is equal to seven. Simplifying on the left by adding like terms together, we get an x plus 6 equals 7. Subtract a 6 from each side, x is equal to 1. So what we have is 
three planes intersecting in a point. Again, think about that as the coordinates for the corner of a room with the ceiling being one plane, front wall and side wall being the other two planes. Now, when we are working with equations in three dimensions, the solutions are points common to the planes. There can be one point, as we just saw, there can be an infinite number of points or no points at all. And let's set that information down. When you have a system of three equations with three unknowns, we have three possibilities. The planes intersect at one point. That's what we just saw. You have one solution. In terms of a description of the system, it is consistent. And we call the equations independent. Planes that intersect along a common line have an infinite number of solutions. They are consistent, but in terms of the equations, they are dependent. And last possibility, the three planes or intersect two at a time with no point common to all three. There is no solution. As far as a system, it is inconsistent, but it is independent. These terms are similar when we're working with two equations and two unknowns, so think about where what those look like graphically, and we're dealing with very similar situation with the three equations or the equations of the planes here.